Welcome to the OAPN podcast with your host Adar Sakre. No bullshit, no cuts. 100% raw conversations with 0% fucks to give. We don't encourage the consumption of alcohol, but if you want to open up a cold one while you watch this, it's not a bad idea. Welcome to episode number 104 uh on a personal note with Adar Sakre. On 103 we had uh, Rohit, uh, the founder of uh, Bailey Opinionated. wonderful interview again uh, you know because we are working with the hub and azan now in a few on a few things uh, it was nice to get rohit's view on things uh, you know in terms of how they work as well uh, today like you're already uh, witnessing our setup is very different i think this is probably the first time we are in such a you know beautiful and a natural setup if i may say so uh, the first time we stepped out of the studio was for mohandas pai on the 100th episode today we have another special guest uh, on the podcast before i speak a little about her uh, let's say hi to vani murthy ma'am hi ma'am hello are how are you today super this way was waiting for this interview <laughs> thank you for acknowledging thank you for accepting our invite uh, i think on that note i also want to thank uh, harsha for making this happen so harsha and dipika are here in the studio so it's all like a circle so i connected with dipika or rather dipika connected with me <laughs> that's a that's a that's a long story okay we connected yeah. uh dipika had introduced me to harsha and now harsha has introduced us to vani ma'am so uh, that's how this kind of came through we are happy to be here i think uh, uh we always passionate about doing these things there's a reason why we are doing this for the 104th time uh today i think considering uh vani ma'am's story uh this is really a privilege for us This is really like one of those things we won't forget for a very long time. Thank right? It's one of those milestones for us. So, uh I think it's really sweet. Uh this is the first time I'm meeting you ma'am, but I think from uh, whatever I've heard from the people who know you and from uh, the 2000 plus Instagram posts that I went through yesterday. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Your first post was in 2013. and uh, yeah it took me quite some time <laughs> i don't know how much of it i remember but i went through quite a bit and it's such a sweet journey right i mean all of us have our own journeys i think what's beautiful about any journey is how much you embrace it how much you accept whatever it is uh and uh, the the acceptance when i say is about that that journey is for you right we talk about so many different type of journeys but i think what makes a journey beautiful is accepting that that journey is for you uh but before accepting you also got to identify what that journey is for you and uh, i think that's come out beautifully with vani ma'am's life uh it's also nice to see how well she connects with uh, anyone of any age uh i don't see uh, you know i think she's a pure example that age has no connection with the amount of energy or passion you put into something uh when you're living truly when your intentions are true i think that just automatically comes out it comes out almost effortlessly if i may say so uh right uh, so it's a privilege for us to be sitting here uh there are multiple articles there are multiple interviews of vani ma'am of course but uh, i think the one thing that i told vani ma'am was uh you know apart from all the work uh, she's done and teaching us how to reduce waste teaching us how to live a more uh, sustainable a uh, lifestyle teaching us to reduce usage of plastic i think today uh, while we do touch upon some of those topics i was also interested in knowing where things started for uh, vani ma'am and uh, maybe just get a little more info on her you know life apart from the work that she's done so if you have known about her work uh, which most of you all uh, obviously would have uh, i invite you to this because you're going to see a different side of her uh if you have come across her content maybe recently her instagram page is always growing like we all know uh this is a chance for you as well to get to know her better so welcome to the episode welcome ma'am thank, thank you thank you for coming home yeah. and doing this episode yeah. this is wonderful how many years have you lived here i'm 25 25 years and uh you have never thought of uh, going outside india and no uh, no so not outside malaysia <laughs> not outside malaysia <laughs> no Okay what is it that you like about Maleshwaram Bangalore home. this is home i was born in bangalore mm-hmm. raised in hyderabad but i got married and came to this house 
Yeah. So it is my husband's family, my children. Yeah. They are all deeply connected to Maleshwaram. To so, Maleshwaram. Yeah. I think most residents are. Yeah. Like a lot of the people who have lived here for a very long time, they really connect to it. They never want to leave exactly. Maleshwaram. Exactly. It's nice to hear. So, ma'am, how is life generally today? Like, you're happy? You're happy with the way things are going? Uh, yeah, are you generally a happy person? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What what keeps you going? <laughs> well, uh, it's like I think I create my own happiness okay. because with so much of negativity all around, mm-hmm. you you hardly uh, you know you could easily get sucked into so many negative things that happen. Mm-hmm. So, what I believe that I I I I can if I have to be happy, I can I have to create my happiness. Mm-hmm. So, well, it's like getting uh, you know people into my lives, the kind of people that are are there in my life that itself is so gratifying for me so I feel very privileged I feel very lucky I feel very grateful Mm -hmm. for the life that I have and uh, I don't think I should do anything to make me unhappy you know (laughs) I don't uh, I don't think I should do that so I yeah and also my work and the the connection to the you know work that Mm -hmm. we are doing uh, the kind of lifestyle change that has happened how i have evolved as a individual that has that has been a tremendous change i was never like this ever mm. before okay. so uh, i think this mission also has given me the confidence to be who i am brought my inner self out you know the authentic self coming out no more doubts about myself mm. as there are no more doubts and uh, you know feeling who i am so yeah i am much more confident uh, so much more uh, aware of myself. So that, that's one thing that keeps me winning. That keeps you going and happy. Uh, where did you study? Uh, was it in Bangalore? No. no. Okay. So uh, I was born in Bangalore. I'm born in with a twin. So first born twins we are. Oh. And then uh, I had younger two younger sisters too. And my father moved to Hyderabad. Okay. So he was in the public sector. So he moved to Hyderabad. And then uh, uh, all our education was there. So in Hyderabad? In Hyderabad, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. And uh, you moved to Bangalore after marriage? Yes, exactly. Okay. And uh, I mean, if I may ask, what's better, Hyderabad or Bangalore now? Any if day you day. had to pick? Any, any day, day, day. <laughs> Because it, it's, it's, it was in the past, it was great. Sure. You know, there, there were a lot of things that uh, I, I have fond memories of. Mm. But uh, what's grounding me and what's given me the life I have today is Bangalore. Sure. So, um, yeah, my birthplace. <laughs> That's lovely. Oh, so you were born yes, in Bangalore, you yes, moved yes. and you came back. Uh, just to get an idea about uh, how early days were for you, uh, you did mention, you. of course, we are all aware that you've had a, uh, you know, this big change, you know, personally or even professionally. But uh, I definitely want to maybe get a context of uh, who Vani Ma'am was maybe as a 10-year-old girl, right? Uh, was she uh, studious? Was she ambitious? Uh, was she shy? Was she scared? Was she motivated? What are some of the traits you remember being uh, a ten-year-old girl that uh, you can share? Yeah, I, I was. I was not uh, uh, adventurous. I was not very studious. I was actually scared. Uh, you were scared. Outside of world was very daunting for me. Okay. So since I had a twin sister, it was easy for me to deal with the outside world because she was there. She was a tomboy, and you know she could beat up any boy <laughs> if, it, if we had some kind of uh, you know altercations and uh, so it was yeah she was very protective towards me so it was mm. okay but without her my life was like I no I wouldn't step out of the house mm. so it was like that and very uh, protective en- environment we were the middle class family and uh, you know dad uh, was the only earning member with six mm. women in the house so in the household where my granny was there, my mom and my four daughters. So, uh, yeah, okay. it, it was like that, growing like that. And yeah, it it, it very close knit, you know, mm. family. And dad took, wanted us to adventure and learn a lot of things. He taught us swimming, cycling, oh, wow. dr- how to ride a scooter. You know, he, 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 he was not a graduate. So his only ambition was his daughters should become graduates. So, so, so that was his, yeah, uh, his only ambition. Priority and sure. uh, my ambition stopped there. <laughs> so, uh, oh, I'd graduate. Oh, dad wanted me to graduate. I should graduate. So, uh, so that 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 was the only thing. But the thing is, what happened for me and my twin Lana mm. was that uh, well, she was very keen on playing cricket. Mm. So she would do uh, uh, you know play with the boys in our colony. We had a colony life where it was like uh, people from all over India were there. 
it was a public sector and defense uh, HAL, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. So there were a lot of people uh, from different uh, regions. So it was a very mixed kind of crowd. And uh, she would always play with the boys cricket and all that. And her, uh, she, she feels that uh, I'm no less than a boy. You know, I can do anything the boys can do. And she so wanted that, to prove that. Yeah. So she was playing. And then uh, when we went into college, there was a college cricket team. And, and I, because uh, my life was nothing without her. So wherever she does, whatever she does, I would do. I would do. So she started playing for the college and they said, we have one person less, you come. So well, they pulled you in? Yeah. <laughs> but then, uh, uh, you know, those days we, we had the we playing 11. If one is injured, then uh, someone from the audience only will be pulled in. So we didn't have that kind of, you know, I'm talking about, you know, 77, 78, 79, 1979. So uh, then I got pulled in, though I used to hate uh, you know, because in, in winters, the hard ball, you know, the, uh, it would hurt. And I, I'm very delicate, you know, when I was growing up. So, uh, but then camps and then got, she was playing for the state of Andhra Pradesh. I mean. And then uh, university, when we went to our degree, we played for the U Usmania University. So three years uh, on the dot, I was always the reserve opener, <laughs> kind of, you know. My sister was, the, she would open batting and bowling for the university and for the state. And then uh, I would always be a part of the AP team, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, though not, not a playing member, uh, but always in the reserves. In so the reserves. happily, uh, people would ask me to do massage for their backs or legs, <laughs> painting. So I would be like the official masseur, <laughs> you know, helping everybody. And yeah, it was good fun because, uh, you know, yeah. uh, it, we, we got to travel, uh, you know, because those days the they would take us in unreserved. And, you know, we had a lot of uh, issues because there was nothing, not much money those days in, mm. in women's crickets. It was all fun. <laughs> so it does seem like uh, your sister has had a huge influence on you in early years. Yes. Uh, you seem very attached. Yes, yes. To her. Yes. Uh, and, uh, okay, so maybe let's uh, move from there a little. So... Uh, the point I want to kind of uh, get is, uh, I wanted to clarify before I go on to the next uh, part was, so were you studious, were you not studious? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay, not, okay. Uh, not uh, uh, you know, coming in big ranks and all. Okay. Uh, if I could pass and get 40 marks, I'll be very happy. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> My father also will be very happy. <laughs> so. Were you a talkative student, silent student? No, quiet student, but uh, people would come and, uh, because I would catch the concept faster so okay. people come and ask me mm. you know, to so help them solve a math problem or something like that so yeah i would i would be helpful for people sure. but uh, i don't think i was very studious as such mm. yeah and like you said i think uh, your father had set the standard saying you know graduation yeah. is the goal so as long as you're pulling through that uh, you feel you're pretty much mm. okay yeah. i'm doing my job yeah yeah i'm doing my job i never went into that uh, competition and you know mm. trying to ra raise you or your father uh, we because okay. my dad never believed in that you know? okay so he, he said, what was he in do your best what did he uh, what's the type of work he he, he was an uh, engineer with a diploma in engineering okay and uh, he he was uh, with HL in the you know in, in the drawing uh, drawing section where they would do their drawing of you talk about the uh, make Make plane, the Russian, this one, which got translated and oh. all the drawings. So he was in that uh, technical yeah. thing. And a uh, hardworking man, mm. uh, very domesticated with six women in the house. Mm. So, yeah, he had a lot of values uh, and uh, yeah, principles. Oh. Was that an influence on you as well? Totally, totally. Yeah. Because it gave, gave us, we never feared anything because he always said, it's okay to do. It's okay, you know, to do and there was no, you should do this or shouldn't do it. Try it. Do. Give it a try. Learn. Fall and learn. So, uh, that why when he taught us, uh, you know, scooter, he told me first thing is, uh, if the scooter, if you fall and the scooter gets damaged, I'll not blame you. But if you fall and get hurt, don't blame me. <laughs> so, kind of, you know, trade-offs we would do. So, yeah. I see. The times that you're talking about is, uh, what, early 70s? Yeah, I'm 61 born, so mm. 10 years when you asked me, it is around early 70s. 70s. Hooked on uh, a lot of, uh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, we would listen to uh, SLBC those days. Sri what Lanka, is SLBC? Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. Wow. With a broken, uh, uh, you know, radio hit it this way, that way. And, you know, and uh, let it go, Voice of America. Mm. 
uh, listening to you know country music and uh, so th- that's how I, my teenage you know we both of my me and my sister we were we loved the soft rock and all that wow yeah. so uh, i mean for early 70s and the things you are telling me it does seem like this is a family that was ahead of its time would you agree I mean, because my my community thoughts. there were like that. Uh, okay, yeah. you're saying that whole community was yeah, because it same. was such a mixed. You know, you had people from all over India, mm-hmm. and there were Russians, and there were some uh, uh, some other uh, foreigners. I don't know. They were there. You know, we'd all swim together and all wow. that. So yeah, it was quite nice. Yeah, I would say yes. It was a little of ahead of yeah. Mm. So uh, what? What did you study in graduation? I did my commerce. Okay. Bcom. <laughs> yeah. And that was in uh, Osmania University. Oh, Osmania. Oh, I think my mom went to Osmania University. If oh, I'm not wow. wrong. So my mom grew up in Hyderabad. Mm-hmm. So her whole family uh, is from Hyderabad. Okay. So I've heard this name multiple times. Maybe she'll uh, remember. Mm. Anyway, so while you were doing your graduation, also you would have noticed uh, like a big difference in the type of exposure you had, maybe. Uh, or maybe thought processes were was it different? Uh, uh, where I'm taking this is in terms of uh, how were other women brought up at the time versus. I what? think uh, people who came to college were all quite. Yeah, okay. you know, from uh, we had uh, different uh, people who whose parents were highly educated. Mm-hmm. They were doing college, and uh, and. Uh, I think it was. I mean, I I didn't see anything big difference. Sure. Uh, we all look like we are from same background. Mm. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what did uh, the others in the family study? Nobody was forced into engineering. No, what my youngest know? sister wanted to do a medicine. Okay. She got also, but my dad said I can't afford to put you into <laughs> medicine. <laughs> Poor man, he was. <laughs> so. Uh, Having to marry your four daughters, you yeah. know, he, uh, it was it was not easy for him to you know uh, set aside anything for education. Sure. So we we on our own steam sports quota we got. We didn't have to pay money yeah. for my university because you know they had all these. Uh, the, we could uh, get some kind of mm. uh, concession. Concession. Yeah. So those things yeah. definitely helped. So we we made sure that we don't strain our father. That's really sweet. That's very sweet. Uh, how long after your graduation were you married? Immediately. Immediately. Yes. Wow. My dad yeah. always said, "I have four daughters. I can't afford to hold you all back. So I'll start. You know, uh, <laughs> he's like, you know, you have to march out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's so happy. That was yeah, the, the uh, universe. Kind of what he, he he very clearly, uh, you know, manifested. Mm. He wanted that to happen. Yeah. So first, my twin got married. Then within six months, I got married. So. Uh, 83 we graduated out uh, 82 and 83 we both were married so, married and i also had my son in 83 so wow. it, something mm. things that happen pretty fast in the thing so yeah sure uh, thanks for setting that up it always helps me just understand a little better about who you are and uh, where some of those uh, thoughts or things that have happened today come from so thanks for that uh, so maybe moving into this phase of uh, uh you know so there is this gap of uh, you know from the time of uh, being married mm. to the time of saying okay vani ma'am decided to uh you know share knowledge with the world or maybe help the community be more vocal about her knowledge and so there is this uh, transformation phase if i may call it yeah uh yeah what did you enjoy about that phase so, so clearly you're not in that phase anymore there's a lot happening with your life mm. in comparison to say uh, 25 years ago yes yes uh what did you enjoy about that phase and what was it that made you say hey you know what i can change things mm. i don't need to do the same thing tomorrow right yeah if you i think the excitement and the curiosity to uh learn understand and uh the fact that i stepped out of the house you know mm. that itself was the uh, it it even today that the happiest thing is that i have been able to break my own uh you know trapping like i have been trapped my i trap myself saying that i i wouldn't know how to deal with people outside the world in the outside world so my husband was always protecting me taking me here taking me there so i i didn't do but at one point of time kids grew up my boys grew up and uh, uh, i know i went around with my friend dr meenakshi and uh, she said oh no you will do this and she's educated professional and she is like 
you know, uh, fertility specialist and all that. And she really mentored me and uh, all my fears, you know, I'm there, come, let's do this, let's do that. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that excitement of learning uh, about how the outside world is works, how groups of people, like there is a resident welfare association, how they, they try to, you know, uh, garner support from the uh, local government to make our uh, area better. You know how can we keep keep our roads, our pavements, and so when when you when I saw that my when my first exposure happened, I was very curious to learn more. Though there is still that hesitancy, you know. Uh, there oh, is you're still even now. Not now. Oh, okay. Now it will come back. See, we uh, it will not go. We are not completely mm. liberated. It just gets better. But you need to only understand that that's the trapping that is telling you not to do something. And then once you break that, you you can do things. Uh, even now, I love being at home. Mm. The, the very fact that you're here is... <laughs> <laughs> is a pro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I learned how to drive. I drive. I, I cannot imagine me driving myself alone in in, okay. in the days, those days. So, and now you do? Yeah. Wow. So, a okay. uh, so lot of... I have liberated myself mm. to an extent where now I'm comfortable... Uh, with things around and uh, with people around and uh, yeah no more uh, the universe is no more a uh, scary place for me mm. so yeah I, I don't think uh, it ever is I think we make it uh, scary for ourselves yeah, yeah. with the trapping that we yeah have. we trap ourselves we build these shells and all of us have exactly uh, our own shells maybe for you it was more physical like okay yeah. I don't want to leave my home but I think some of us have mental yeah. shells that we deal with uh, every day. What is it that you liked about that phase though? That you miss now? It, it was so organic. I mm. mean, it, it was like, it was propelling me to do, it was, uh, you know, there was no hesitation to learn more. You know, there is a project, okay, let's do, let's do, let's do, I'll come, I'll come. <laughs> though I wouldn't take a lead in anything, but I would be there. I'll come and help and this and that. So it was nice for me to uh, experience Life outside my home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I've also noticed in the research that I do that uh, you do love helping community. You like being part of a community. And uh, I don't think you're a person chasing uh, spotlight or limelight. You just like to be there, like you said. Uh, what is it uh, that motivates you to work with community like you you know let it be a plantation drive or let it be a workshop you just enjoy having yes. people around you and I think the biggest thing is that I can part uh, or share uh, practices that I feel that each of us need to be a part of uh, so I think this is this planet needs people who are aware and who take action so I'm always excited about that so to, as far as possible, I try to, uh, you know, uh, engage myself in community activities. But I'm a part of a group called Solid Waste Management Roundtable. And we we are, uh, you know, really have been a fantastic unit and uh, doing a lot of things. So I feel very proud to be a part of such aware people and uh, who are uh, setting aside their personal time and, you know, uh, giving it to the betterment of the community, giving education and awareness and training to the community and at the same time uh, so cued into uh, taking care of our planet you know uh, by our own practices so we are practitioners basically mm -hmm. and uh, enjoy sharing our practice so there's no like lessons or trying to tell people do this don't do this or you're doing this wrong there's no judgment here it is just the joy of when I say people uh, composting I say experience the you know excitement of wanting to compost because ultimately when you compost, you're not sending that waste out to for it to pollute our environment. In, instead, you're creating this amazing black hole that you're putting in your plants and growing something. So that excitement part is what I would like to translate. You want to share. With yes, that. You. Translate to people who, you know, uh, whom I meet. Because it's that beautiful. You know what it yeah. feels like. It feels like, you know, I, I keep telling people like that one act of composting is like for me, it's a daily practice. And every time I compose, I I feel I pay my rent to live on this planet. Oh, that's amazing. Yes. That's a nice way to... I, I, that's what, somewhere yeah. I read this. You can't just keep taking. Yeah. So, this is the rent I pay. Yeah. So, 
each of us have something that we do to say we are grateful and thankful for this beautiful environment that we live in which actually helps you to thrive this is the only planet that helps life to thrive so yeah that where was the early exposure for some of these techniques like let even simple thing like i told harsha also uh you know that that whole as basic as segregation of wet waste and uh, dry waste and you know after his interview i said you know what i really like it was almost like i open up for me so maybe for me not just harsha but even now this interview is like a i open up after i read about your work uh, in extens yesterday uh, but for you where was that uh, thing like no the thing is uh, uh, when was it part of your household early on no, no no yeah so how did that come into your household so when when you see the problem uh, you know the the actual problem which we as humans are creating when you are very aware of it when you learn about it when you see it you you something shifts in you because uh, we are the only species that keeps generating things that the earth can't digest every other species is not generating anything that the earth can't digest they live in harmony with nature so they are a part of nature so they are not polluting in any way they there is a cycle of life that they maintain they are not corrupted they don't have any kind they live in harmony with nature but we are the only ones who are so when we know that we create a landfill i went we went and visited the landfill uh, in 2009 and it was a huge eye opener because this is the kind of garbage that we are sending out there is a village there and there are people in that village they are growing food for the city it's outside the city limits and you see this mountain of garbage which is stinking even 1 km away you can you can get that smell of rotting food waste and other things and when we learned what an landfill does to the environment there's no looking back if everybody understood the root of the problem is we we have created that okay. so can't we say i will not send my waste i will not send my waste to the landfill what do i do then i generate waste we think that every each of us have to hand it over to our municipality and they will take care of it yeah but it is such a humongous amount no municipality will be able to deal with it and no landfill will take care of it because it's too much so we like bangalore generates 4000 5000 tons per day so where will it go so if if each individual says nan kasa nan jawabdari my waste is my responsibility and make sure you reduce the waste by not today's world is like convenience Yeah, you pull yeah. a tissue you take a mm. bottle water and you know you drink and throw so single use you know is such a, such a norm you know it's such a normal thing when you have 10 people in your house you want disposables you don't want to wash those vessels again so you buy disposables you get so the amount of garbage that each of us are generating is too much so it so happens that once one people get aware and i can make a difference i don't have to send my garbage 60% is compostable i can compost it at home now the 30% is recyclable i can make sure that i send it to a recycling center which which will which will make sure that there is a, a, a society which which need, which depend on that for livelihood so we are giving clean waste so that we give dignity to the people who work in waste mm-hmm. and they are they are earning from the waste that we generate which they can sell so when you see all this it is so exciting to put such practices in place i would never ever mix waste again it will always be segregated make sure that it goes to its destination not just give the entire segregated waste and then keep the people keep complaining that oh when i give the waste in segregated form then mix everything and put so again i will take full responsibility yeah. of that because i didn't make sure that it yeah. it moved away from uh, landing in the landfill you know going to the landfill so i, I think that's so, the thing mm, so somewhere that uh, landfill that you saw was uh, that that's big. a ta- turner because i mm-hmm. swore that i'll not send because this seeing the kind of uh, the villages is there it is so terrible for them if there is air, air pollution water pollution and soil pollution all the three happens at a landfill and there are people in fact they were saying that men don't get married their women don't want to come because of the stink the mosquitoes and the dogs that breed there in the landfill there's no dignity for people who work in the you know waste workers they go Uh, it on the landfill which is so dirty and they pick and there are multiple places like this even today all over all over there will be mini landfills there will be huge landfills so landfill is a dumping yard it's not scientific at all it's, it's just, just a dumping yard yeah 
So, it, 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 unfortunately, some villages are, are proximity is so close, too close that they are suffering because of that. They have uh, skin diseases. The water is highly contaminated because the leachate that goes into the groundwater is, is there, and the soil is contaminated. So, probably what we are throwing is coming back to us through food and water and the air. So, I think once this sets into people when they open up their mind to understand a problem, and understand the problem is because of you. I'm contributing to it. I can withdraw that. Mm. At least from my side, I feel very good that I'm not contributing I'm not to a mess. So I think the the shift should happen, and that's what I we say. It's one one person at a time. Yeah. I will not think of saying, "Oh, yeah, I have a magic wand and I'll do this," and the whole population will, you know, change to become very sustainable, very aware, and you know, uh, of what they are, you know, the impact of their lifestyle. On this environment, a beautiful environment, mm. environment that should thrive, life should thrive. We're cutting down trees. Uh, most of the species are disappearing. When you there is no life under the soil because there's no organic matter, desertification is happening. So all the root problem, all the problem is human being, who is completely uh, moved away from uh, being close to nature or having connection to nature. Even in our day-to-day -day yeah. routine. So uh, maybe on a lighter note. So first thing when uh, I told Harsha, go yeah, timing is done. He said whatever it is, don't bring a plastic bottle. Correct? No. He said, ma'am will get very angry. I said, yeah, of course. I mean, did I ever get angry? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he said, don't. Bring I won't it. even look at it okay. to make you feel uncomfortable about it. <laughs> so the where I'm leading is uh, your family members. Do they get a dose if they? No. Oh, they don't get a dose because they don't do it, or like whether they know. do or not do. I don't judge people. Uh, it's my practice. If but they, if they feel inspired by me, not dose. I, I, I would. Uh, they would. They feel guilty sometimes. Okay. You know. Oh, she, she may feel bad. So I think the change happens there. So many times okay. I've gone to friends' weddings and they'll come and tell me, "See, we couldn't do this. You know, we're giving bottled water to everybody. We tried and we couldn't." I said, "Did I complain?" Did I hold you up? Nothing. You you just do. Don't come. I, you don't have to explain anything to me. Please go ahead and enjoy. I'm also enjoying the wedding. So I'm not a person who is so eco-conscious that I go there and I feel miserable about, oh my mm. God, so much plastic they're using. No, I yeah. still enjoy. See, the transformation has to happen. Otherwise, people yeah. do not know. So it's very deep down that you need to make the transformation. Sure. And that's going to take a long time. And I have the patience. This lifetime, I will not expect huge drastic changes. But when I see changes happening, that's what keeps me, uh, when I meet people like Harsha, the youngsters, I feel there is hope, you know, everybody is doing so much work. And you know, like now I met uh, Deepika also, there, there are, see, in my journey, this is what comes up. Like when you now you say you, you, you say something on your phone and then that advertisement will come up. Mm. Like that, because the things that I do, the people that I meet are popping up, people who feel like that are so sensitive about things they want to learn they want to make a difference to the uh, to the, to our beautiful planet so mm. that's what happens i think universe plays that role yeah. uh, you you attract that kind of people so i have an amazing set of friends and uh, you know team and uh, uh, online the kind of people that you know so much of respect and so much of uh, you know it, it just overwhelms me that uh, really is this what people you know are giving me Maybe that's what is giving me the life that I have today. Mm. So I am ever grateful for that. Uh, this love for nature was also uh, triggered by uh, seeing some of these things or was love for nature always a part of your... Never. <laughs> no? No. Okay. I haven't... Uh, because there's no. plants everywhere, there's greenery everywhere. I haven't grown a single plant before, before I got into this. Okay. I always thought there's something called the green thumb. What is that? A green thumb. I everybody has only whatever color of their skin. Okay. They don't have a green thumb. I realize I don't. I I don't have to have a green thumb. Okay. Once you connect to nature, once you connect to soil, you you can experiment. You know, a lot of people are so afraid to experiment. If they if they two plants die, they say I kill plants. I I don't think I can ever grow again. So they give up on even trying. So it's like for me, my life has been within the experience is through experiment. Mm. Right from composting or to grow food in my terrace, everything has been the experience is only through experimentation. It's okay for me to fail. It's okay for me to uh, not get it right. 
even in in spite of so many attempts but i will laga keep keep at it because i know this is the best thing that i can do for myself so that excitement is there and you continue so you do you don't get into a negative space of saying no 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 lot of people say i started composting and you know it started stinking and i stopped so that's where i feel they're still having these they're doing it because someone told or it's like mm. trendy and people are all doing you know so i i feel people should, uh, get more uh, attached to uh, uh, to a relationship with the nature natural world mm. is in detachment now there's total detachment even children are completely detached from natural world they are with gadgets and you know have hard mm. fast paced life and all so they don't even know what if you touch mud the mother will say come oh, wash your hand put that all this that so you actually taking children away from what gives them a better uh, immunity you know playing yeah. with soil uh, there is a connection between the bacteria in your gut and the soil microbes now soil doesn't have microbes also because it's killed because of all the chemicals that people because of our own action yeah we are really doing that so it's it's a little tricky to uh, get people to start thinking so deeply but if it happens it's like this people yeah. completely it's like Uh, they get into the path and it just sucks you and you constantly you're putting in new practices getting more more closer to nature doing more things you know so yeah but that thing has to happen that shift has to happen growing growing up uh, i mean i'm the youngest cousin but i heard stories of my older cousins eating ants they're still alive and all yeah. good yeah so all my cousins used to eat ants without yeah man ella man tintidro ಏನು ಮದರ್ ವುಡ್ ಕಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೈಪ್ ದಮ್ ಔಟ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಮೈಲ್ ಇನ್ ಕಂಡಿದ್ರೆ ಅಂತ ಹೀಗೆ ಹಾಕಿ ತೆಗೆದು ಬಿಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರೆ ಬಟ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಜಾಬ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅಮೆಝಾನ್ ದಿಸ್ ದಟ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ವೆಲ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ನಮ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ಸೂಪರ್ ಸ್ಯಾನಿಟೈಜ್ಡ್ ಓಕೆ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆಸ್ಟರ್ನ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ದಟ್ ಎನಿಬಡಿ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಯು ಎಸ್ ಅನ್ ಆಲ್ ದೇ ಫಾಲ್ ಸಿಕ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಕಾಂಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಸೋ ಸ್ಯಾನಿಟೈಜ್ ಈವನ್ ದ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಬಗ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಚ್ ವುಡ್ ಗುಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಿಲ್ ಹಾರ್ಮ್ ದೆಮ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ದೋಸ್ ಬಗ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಸೂಪರ್ ಸ್ಯಾನಿಟೇಷನ್ sanitation is really killing our uh, health mm. i think uh, in future health will be the biggest mm. problem you know lifestyle and health because you are disconnected from nature so yeah i like this topic i think i definitely wanted to touch on this uh the topic of health right i wanted to get uh, and i don't mind if uh, like i'm going sometimes between topics mm. but i i want to ensure that we speak about oh, no some of these things so health is uh, of course we all look at health so differently now uh, i think my first thing that came to my mind was the usage of dairy products uh, i don't know your stand on it so what is it fine is it not fine mm. is dairy good is dairy bad i i i won't say uh, anything but what i have learned i i'm surrounded my by friends who are dairy free who are uh, they call themselves vegans uh i i definitely love to shift i have done a lot of shift but I'll still i wouldn't call myself vegan because i'll put mm-hmm. myself in a box sure. uh because i'm not 100% mm. uh, i mean i will if i go to somebody's house and if there is something like that i wouldn't and at home also sometimes i make coffee for my husband i may take a sip some days i'll be totally dairy free so it's not like uh, as a movement i'm not a part of that but i feel yes um uh, you know uh, right now i have found that i have inflammation in my body mm-hmm. and uh, if i can really keep off you know dairy i can help you it will 100% mm. 100% i eat healthy i i cook healthy meals you know all that but dairy could could be the cause for that inflammation so uh, mm-hmm. it's not that i don't know i know it but it takes time for people to transition to completely taking off sure. we we look at alternatives there are plenty today you know for alternatives for curds and sure. all that i used to make my own peanut curd and all oh, lovely yeah so but i am surrounded by friends who are vegan, vegan? So we always go to a vegan restaurant when they come i'm only cooking everything as it is my, my cooking doesn't have it's coconut based and all that there's no uh, paneer you don't use there. yeah it's only for coffee mm. chai and all that we use you might, so uh, that uh, yeah so well, it's no? yeah so but i don't box myself saying sure. that i am vegan and you've never eaten non vegetarian food no never no. never that's by religion or like you feel no uh, of course it would have started because of religion yeah not religion eating. but okay. it is the practice of our uh, my, Your, my my parents my in-laws okay. all of us okay we we not we but not, now you feel uh you know keeping uh any faith reasons aside uh, say just health perspective 
what side are you on? Are you think you think do you think non-veg is uh, No, I have no such thing because my okay. children are all uh, okay. hardcore non-vegetarians and yeah, okay. I'm okay with it. I'm okay, okay with it. I sure. I will not want to judge on food. Mm-hmm. It's their choice. Look. Okay. Uh, so yeah, if, if a vegan comes onto my uh, my uh, you know profile and she sees a milk packet there and they'll go oh, you should not yeah. i i feel why are you judging me you know it's like people uh, have uh, yeah. judged you and given you long essays about yeah yeah uh, it's not that i don't know okay. but i don't I, I don't respond but uh, they they bring their cause mm-hmm. and you know try to explain and you know they'll send me dm saying uh, you know this is dairy is you know cow calf and this and then i said i know all of that and i don't want to respond because it's like uh, yeah, you know you you shouldn't that's why when I don't judge other people when what they eat or what they drink or how they eat, you know, their whether they use do waste management or like I don't judge anybody. I don't ever fi- f- find fault with people and saying that I'm doing right, you're doing wrong. I don't mm. want to be in that space of judgment. Maybe that's what gives me the power also uh, to be very authentic and you know clear where I'm not pointing fingers. I've never ever gone on somebody's wall and told why you're using this or why you're doing that. Never done that. Uh, so today is a day of trolls. You no, know? a lot of people love to, uh, you know, tell you that oh, in Mahamartha idea, you know, you know all that. Tell me something someone has told you which is absurd. Recently, <laughs> okay. recently, recently, I was trolled so badly for being a casteist Brahmin. What is this? <laughs> what Brahmin? Casteist Brahmin. Okay, who so, is a casteist Brahmin? I had no clue. So I was asking my son. He said, "Yeah, yeah, this is what they say." Because I I told uh, I I I usually a lot of people ask me questions, so I would put a reel to answer their questions. Mm-hmm. So I said a lot of people ask me what do I do because I always carry my um, uh, you know uh, reusable kit wherever I go, whether I travel, right. yeah. if I, on the flight you'll never see me taking a paper cup. I will take a so it is to refuse a disposable. It is a clear if you knew if you have been following me, oh. everybody will know mm-hmm. and I have a kit. I made it famous. That you carry your own tumbler, spoon, your water bottle, so that you. Uh, I have a napkin where I will not take a tissue from anywhere. So this is something like how I put my key, my cell phone, my you know uh, umbrella or my specs into my bag, wallet, and all that. I will put these also. This will be part of when I step out of the house, so that I can refuse. So that one person started trolling me, saying that she is casteist. She does not eat. Uh, from if if the restaurant somebody else eat in that plate something 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 oh. and she carries her own so I told many people ask me uh, how how do you wash if suppose you eat mm-hmm. in your own own plate okay. I tell I take a plate when I, if suppose in the in the air, in the uh, you know uh, when I'm waiting for the flight I need to eat mm. some pav bhaji or some something I go to that okay. whatever restaurant and tell don't give me in disposable plate put it in my plate I will eat it and wrap it if there is a place there to wash I wash. But otherwise, people ask, how do you bring it back home, ma'am? I say, I always have a napkin, I nap- wrap it and bring it. So I did a reel saying that I had gone to this place, I had a chart and I I, I, I brought it to my silk, uh, sink and I put up saying that, see, now I'm taking it out, now I'll just wash and I put the napkin also for wash, clean, simple. So why do you worry about, wow. tensed about, if I carry my plate and eat, what will happen and all? So people complicate everything. So I did that and I got so trolled. You know why that troll took that one one reel to 2.5 million views? Views, huh? Mm. It's pushed people, more people started trolling me. And uh, they, more people started trolling yeah, you? Because saying they you're don't a know who I am. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, uh, so even you can be trolled. Yeah. <laughs> which, which I realize only now. In all these years of social media, I have never been trolled. <laughs> people will ask a question uh, and maybe be sarcastic about, you know, yeah. or something. But never trolled as such. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. Uh, now I know what trolling is. Mm, so okay. it's, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of hate, a lot of anger. Oh, that's what I said in the beginning. Yeah, oh, there's so much negativity around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. Uh, difficult to uh, you know not let it affect. Also, yeah. I'm sure uh, it's not easy. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about it like this, but uh, you know, it's such pure intention. You do something. And it gets seen. Mm. It doesn't affect me because I'm not what he thinks I am. Mm. You know, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I explain. A lot of people say, "Why are you explaining to him?" Mm. He just wants conversation. He said, "350 people have liked my comment." Mm. So he wants. He comes to on a person 
who has got a little uh, you know uh, followers few followers so they try to get atten- attention seeking so i just told i have had base pickers sit on my table and we've eaten together what are you talking that i am casteist you know oh you replied to him yeah i replied i told you don't know me hmm. and people say why are you answering him then i realized troll should not be answer you know that's the best way to <laughs> make them frustrated when you answer but to see i have a suggestion which i use okay and just like the comment and just say very cute very cute <laughs> so what we do ma'am you can do it. just call him cute ma'am you not know what to do very good idea <laughs> <laughs> cute people ma'am just think about it right yeah. he'll be so cute if we meet this guy i'm yeah. sorry sure he's cute yeah <laughs> anyway yeah uh, we'll come back a little i was talking about health yeah uh, uh do you take medicines uh, uh, when you when you need to like there's again two types of people right as we grow older i think one set of people say i don't want medicine even if i have a fever i live through that fever for 3 4 days but i'm not touching a medicine i used to be in that okay then there's another type of people before the fever comes the doctor ah. is inside the body yeah 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 i'm the second type but i want to <laughs> change <laughs> I've been the first type for the longest time. Mm. Even now, uh, it's SOS. Any medicine, if I have to take, unless it's really bad, you know, I I do get muscle pain. Uh, you know, some uh, so I, if I can't really sleep at all, two days, two nights I've suffered. So then I said, this medicine is not a solution. So mm. now I have therapists who come online and I do all the, all my stretches, exercises mm-hmm. to make sure that the muscle is uh, stronger and yeah. takes the activities that I do. I couldn't even climb the stairs because it was so painful. So now we look at alternatives where we go to the root of the problem. Fix it from the root, not bandage. So that's what I learned that uh, we, I I yeah. never take medicines for anything. Even now I'm not on any medication. Mm-hmm. Uh thankfully, uh I'm pretty healthy though I am and uh, no, I'm very healthy. so <laughs> yeah but there are niggling problems as you grow up oh, grow old and yeah you need to just make sure that uh, uh yeah you deal with them in the best way sure sure so i think um, this next part of the interview i also want to uh, get some advice from you ma'am i think that is uh, primarily my uh, mm-hmm. uh, motive here as well uh, i think it's not just about uh, the work but just life advice right the reason i asked you about the medicines also was uh, that uh yeah maybe we'll uh, start with something as simple as uh, uh, dependency on uh, relationships in our life right i think we all grow up uh, becoming more and more dependent whether it's a partner or our siblings uh, but in what i've heard and seen uh, irrespective of how how good your relationships are this is almost like a soul journey like you're alone on it uh, in a in a large way uh, so yeah i mean how important have relationships been for you and uh, if you can also talk about uh, how you fought certain battles just by yourself you can have a great partner you can have great siblings but there are battles you must have fought just by yourself right yeah. Uh, some thoughts on some of these things i don't know i've always been a person who who would i just and you know not very uh, uh, confront confronting not very argument let if though my husband will uh, <laughs> so in this again he say hello <laughs> so yeah uh, yeah probably later on uh, i think once i got my own bearings and felt good about myself i i questioned things and you know i i asked but i think relationships are very vital and uh, respect and uh, you know uh, you you'll have to look at what the other person also you know needs you can't be you first in today's world it's about me 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 so mm-hmm. you, no relation works when you are so into yourself uh, i think uh, it's very important for us to understand uh, the partner even with you know i had not a very good relation with my son in the sense it was very con- uh, kind of uh what yeah. i would get it's a friction there is a friction. okay there was but friction. then yeah but over a period of time you know we realized that we both have to not you know uh, yeah. yeah so uh, yeah. he came halfway and i also gave a half we to be we enjoy a very uh, comfortable uh, we, at least we sit together for hours together we are not you know arguing about something so yeah i think it it it, it evolves over time uh it's like the old wine you know uh, it, it takes time uh, not in the beginning but uh, over a period of course with siblings it, there are so many friends 
know, I have great relation with friends. You know, yeah. it's very nice uh, to have because uh, there's only this much and not more. But when you're having relationships like you know your partner or with your kids or with your parents, it's a different ball game altogether. True. So, yeah, I think a lot of patience and um, uh, respect the other person's opinion and what he thinks. If you dismiss them off, then it's not going to be very uh, you know. Mm. This cancel culture has happened you know, nowadays. <laughs> so. <laughs> Whatever they say, you're not very, uh, you know, oh, no, no, no. The uh, first thing you say, no, I don't. So they also have an opinion. They also have a say. Today, uh, I don't, I think a lot of us also discussing the uh, institution of marriage. Uh, some of our generation have opted out of it. Yeah. Uh, how do you think that will turn out? I think it should be okay. No. It should be okay because... Uh, uh, marriage as an institution was very valid in days uh, in in the in because it was a very different kind of it was marrying the family it was mm. like you know you are a part of uh, a new family and you have in laws and joint family and all that so it was very valid uh, the the today as the world is moving away from you know that kind of commitment to a marriage they have multiple uh, you know partners and what are your thoughts about that ma'am I am fine someone. Having say four or five partners no, over yeah. a lifetime, yeah, over a lifetime, over not life, at once. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that that is, yeah. that's what I would object. That I would object. But then yeah. over a lifetime, it's fine because yeah. you never know uh, whom you will gel, which is mm. the best. Ultimately, if you are together for a life, then it should be. It should Compared. take some time for you to come to that stage. A lot of people don't even uh, uh, take that time to finish thinking. Yeah, this is the time. So there may be something that would come up and they feel they are not compatible. It's best just to get away. It's You shouldn't be in toxic relationships. And if it is not going to do good for your mental, and mental health, it's the biggest problem today. Mm. Okay, So you have to conserve and preserve your mental health and not get into something. So I am fine with that. I am fine once my, sas, my son was not, you know, not even interested in getting me. I said, are you gay? If you're gay also, you tell me. You know, I have no problems at all. Oh, so I, I, you I'm have really to be, liking this interview now. Yeah, you have to be accepting as... See, you cannot be uh, with what how you grew up. Mm. You have to open up to see what the world is. And you have to also adjust to that world. You can't stay in high ground and I mean high horse and say, mm. this is how I am, this is what. So I never have told my children that you have to follow this tradition, that tradition. You're open to do what you want, mm. how you want. Yeah, life school is not marriage or finding a partner anyway. No? Yeah. And now he's happily married. I'm so happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, uh, yeah, so, yeah. That's really nice. Uh, so we spoke about health. We spoke about uh, now relationships. Uh, I also want to touch upon money as a concept. And uh, so I think my biggest savior has been the fact that... Uh, I went from a person who thought that that has to become like my ultimate uh, goal, you know, just gathering as much wealth as possible uh, to now becoming a person that I should have enough to serve my purpose or what I feel my purpose is. Uh, a large part of our generation is still chasing, you know, money and they think that is the definition of a good life. Uh, yeah, what do you feel about that and yeah. don't you think it's miserable? to live like that absolutely there's a huge burnout in that race and uh, I feel uh, you know security is what they're looking at that you know they want to provide for kids and so when they think like that it is valid from their point of view but uh, if there is a chance for a person to say no I want to do what I I'm passionate about and leave leave this rat race or trying to you know this corporate life and all that uh, it is uh, such a lovely thing for him. You know, I will be most happy for a person who will you know, get away from... Uh, you're trapped in, in such things, you know, and there's a huge burnout. Uh, they may have cars, they may have, they may go on great holidays, uh, they may put their children in the best schools, but uh, ultimately, re relationships have huge problems and, uh, you know, uh, you don't know what they're coping with. Mm. It's too much stress, I think, in today's world, especially when uh, when nutrition is very low. When mm. when you have enough nutrition, you have the energy to do what you want. Today, the kind of food that we are eating is not giving you the nutrition that will give you the energy uh, to be that Superman that you want to be. You know, to earn that kind of money. And uh, yeah, some are very lucky with little effort they can do. But a lot of people are putting a lot of effort 
to do they are doing two jobs you know if you even two see jobs, youngsters yeah. they'll be doing two jobs to get that money you know they have to pay their bills nothing is easy you know rents are high and uh, cost of living is high so it's valid from their point of view but yeah, right. i only hope that they get you know i i love painting and when i was young and i wish oh, i yeah. can give up my job and start painting you know <laughs> go to some nice place sit down and you know paint and so nice it's so nice for people to have that mm-hmm. yeah I I going to retire at some point from doing all this work uh, helping people communities all of this is the, is there even a retirement No I am I am semi retired I'm You're semi retired I am at home okay. so <laughs> so that is semi retired uh, anything I do uh, online workshops I, is in no no in person so I need to also take care of my health and my husband's health I can't run around like before and uh, before at the drop of the hat I would go you know i would take the kids from my building uh, put on the awareness stuff in my bo- uh, car boot car, car boot go to jayanagar and in that apartment you know uh, 100 people will be there go and talk to them i don't have that kind of energy and i don't have to do there are a lot of people doing i don't have to do that mm-hmm. so now uh, i have a very powerful tool what is that home social media social media. <laughs> <laughs> so i will squeeze it fully and get the best from there you know very is it so putting little reels no every day whatever i don't i don't have any i do everything myself i no should really let it no chance i was just telling uh, harsha that i i as long as i can do many people will say you have to keep you know you have come you have to do this you have to do that i said no whatever in my uh, capacity i can do i will do i'll continue doing enjoy doing the minute that i have to get engage someone my stresses will start i don't want that so if i can do i'll do if i can't i do i don't want a commitment where it is compelled from you i that's how my life work yeah. i i just have to do it when i can your choice of music on the reels are very nice ma'am yeah <laughs> very <laughs> like very app it's so exciting to do on that you know to uh, pull and it gives you such lovely choice also so yeah, yeah it's nice no i think uh, it's really commendable how you do it um is there something uh, bani ma'am would have uh, done differently in the last 15 years something she probably wanted but didn't do you lived a, is satisfied with how the last 15 20 years have gone absolutely yeah it's the best that best opening that i ever have i can't even imagine a life uh, like this in those days <laughs> that i would be like this right and i would talk to groups of people i've talked mm. to you with so much confidence no yeah, we yeah, have yeah. done that no way i would address a gathering of 500 people and talk to them about uh, you know what i'm passionate about i wouldn't go on a stage no, so, uh, i mean it's a totally different life i have now and uh, it's so exciting for me because you know i don't have to go to back to that same life right. that i was uh, the miserable sense sometimes <laughs> uh is there a, a religious or spiritual side to you not really not really so your mantra is just live life to the fullest yeah there's no holy book that's guiding you think that think that think people say wow who is your inspiring inspiring there's no guru no unfortunately no there's no guru telling uh, there's no guru on youtube you're following no no mm. not at all <laughs> hello i can't take name yeah that's why i said <laughs> then one guru i am following but he not ashish patan we ka no i just know i should have been operated oh i thought you dirt the wood <laughs> Okay okay, okay. No, I I don't read much. Mm. So uh, it's like uh, it, it, I I don't think I am I think within myself there is some some spirituality which is not I love that. Yeah. Mm. There there is something the right and the wrong and yeah. you know to be myself and you know not be too uh, so so that I think that's driving me. I don't uh, really uh, gravitate towards some Beautiful. knowledge that I need to get from outside. so my nature itself is giving me all the ma'am you are the first happens. person who told me this ma'am really i'll tell you you are the first person who told me this mm. uh and i'm so happy listening to that because uh, this is a story i've uh, told a few people uh but there's a friend of mine a close friend of mine who's uh, who's really forced me to come to temples with him mm. uh and i have nothing against temples um i i understand it but i've never connected with it yeah so he said yenik macha yenik barala ni no one sati bar he wants me to go to this specific temple that he visits i told him i feel 
I have like direct connection you yeah, know if exactly. I exactly uh, I don't know where I need I don't feel like going somewhere yeah, to yeah. feel the, I have felt the connection always yeah yeah I've always felt the connection I don't know if I need to read a holy book or go to a yeah. sacred place while I completely respect that yes, and I'm yes. I'm not denying it but I'm saying maybe yeah. it's not no I even I, mean, I uh, I'm not a temple goer uh but um, I I feel uh god is everywhere mm-hmm. and uh, if you if you if you respect nature that's the biggest you know I, I why do people go temple if i go temple i'm not asking god give me this make my life like this no i am saying thank you for giving me what i have only for gratitude you go i don't have to go to a temple to tell gratitude the very fact that you know i see uh, around when i when i touch soil or when i do things for my my mother earth i feel the same gratitude for giving me the opportunity to be connected to you i'm the gra- I'm most grateful of course i every day i i like the lamp and you know there, there are certain things that yeah. we do as as we are uh, as our tradition is i do sure. few festivals i don't i told my husband after my mother in law passed away i'll do only three three festivals i've picked in a year i won't do all the 100 festivals that we have i'll do three properly like how she taught me you know i will do that you know i don't want to do so many things i have now it's like i i i say this is what i want and i'm happy with that no guilt you know no feeling bad no guilt not going to a temple i if there is a temple i will go if everybody is going i'll go not that i should not go but i won't like every tuesday i have to go friday i have to go that's not there it's never mm-hmm. been there for me yeah uh if there's one thing uh, you want people to remember you for <laughs> remember me for yeah what do you think that should be i have no you had to i haven't even thought like that <laughs> so like a legacy like uh, uh maybe a yeah, she is friendly and uh, mm-hmm. and very cute auntie lord <laughs> 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 cute <laughs> whether it you said no cute <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like uh, uh, my work will of course i have i have a volume you know of work that i'm leaving behind and uh, uh, that I know that they I don't have to not be here for me to remember the people mm-hmm. are remembering me mm-hmm. now also uh, you know the very fact that I get such love from people mm-hmm. and how what they talk about me think about me because when uh, uh Forbes uh, you know contacted me yeah, they said that- we want to uh, you know uh, can you give what are your achievements what do you think is your impact on this I said how can I write that how can I, I was like I said I will not respond because I don't know how to write. I'm not What is my impact? I can't say this said. And I had an idea. Since they want it, I some few influencers whom I know personally, I just wrote to them, "Can you give me four lines on what you think is my role, what oh. I have done?" Such amazing. I mean, I'm blown by four lines will be like 10 lines, 15 lines. They're so happy giving. I sent all collated it and sent it to them. <laughs> and I'm Forbes a top 100. and you know influencers so i people will speak that was me. the first article that came up on the internet uh-huh. when i put down your name uh-huh. it was the forbes interview that came up is uh-huh. the first yeah so top top 100 influencers can you be that i'm the only 62 year old there so everybody is like 30 something you know so <laughs> you're not even influencers but <laughs> where top 100 uh, that's why i said i'm not a content creator you know mm-hmm. i i live that content damn <laughs> It's very nice. Uh, I probably have just one or two things left, but uh, we want to do something different today. Uh, we're going to get uh, Harsha and Deepika on here. I've okay. given them each four minutes on this couch. Okay. <laughs> We have never done this before, but because uh, they've been so sweet and they've connected me with wonderful people like you, I think it's only uh, you know, uh, it's only fair. Okay. That I include this as part of the nice. interview. Nice. So. Harshal come on first yeah. and then Deepika comes on they have exactly 4 minutes mm. and after that Aditya will give them a ah. it's good to sit in your uh, yeah good hot, to sit in your seat. chair <laughs> hot seat hot seat so this is how it looks when other shit uh, so <laughs> <laughs> so uh thank you others for having me in this chair feels uh, truly special because uh, sitting right next to one of my favorite people Vani ma'am uh So I have uh, two questions. Okay, I have two, just two questions. Go for it. So, uh, so um, what is your uh, favorite memory from Bangalore? 
from bangalore bangalore yeah when when will be this favorite memory like uh, any time okay my favorite memory is a uh, being part of a lovely household mm-hmm. yeah could you tell us something about your old house that you had <laughs> where my children grew up yeah yeah, yeah it's like uh, you know malaysia is like where my my in-laws and their generations have been you know the six men is late, named after my husband's great great grandfather h v nanjindaya so the house was like yeah it was like ancestral home uh, for most of them and uh, right now where we are is that house has come down and we are in it now <laughs> so uh, we have built the apartment on top so yeah it's like uh, yeah memories good memories any favorite uh, like you know memories around maleshwaram like you were talking about that old well yeah yeah you were telling me that story so so uh, we have a kalyani at the back so when i got married and came uh, i used to tell my father in law i want to go and swim there and he said no he said okay get me a korakal and do you know go around <laughs> at least if you don't want me to get in the water i want to do boating there it, it was that huge and uh, he would say no 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 snakes are there they are very protective So I never got to swim in that well, and that's my biggest regret. You ask me if water are my favorite things. That's my biggest regret is I should have swam in that well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find you some other wells. We can all go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, the other uh, question that I have is, uh, if you could give us some tips to our generation as to how to find a purpose for our life. I mean, you've told me before, but if you have to, like, you know, reach this to a farther audience. what is how do we find our purpose in life i think purpose comes to you we no amount of finding if suppose you have drawn some blinkers you will not find anything when the purpose knocks at your door and then when you open you found it uh, to rephrase it how to head in the right direction to be more impactful in, in like society or for ourselves that where you're comfortable you know if you're comfortable wanting to do something a lot of people don't even want to do because they don't have time they have all kinds of excuses not to do something but the minute you step out of that and you you taste the first success of doing something and you got so much pleasure from it and so much of satisfaction then you're drawn into that you know you're drawn into that i mean that's exactly what happened to me like people from from our generation um uh, we are stuck in a rat race right like and we we hardly notice it we are all like blinded by how society has formed the structure of you know how we need to be how a certain person needs to be for example i have broken out of it and a lot of people around me like you know people sitting right here have broken free from that you know like that rat race and we are trying to find our purpose you know but how do one how does one realize how to break free from that you know rat race that they are part of yeah. like how do I, how do they realize that that was very tough because each each person uh, you know it's also the self confidence and uh, you can't tick off people like your parents you know you want to break off and they will expect you to study engineering doctor go for work you know they had set they are already and they are funding your education you know ch- they would have saved up so you can't really break off from that but definitely when when there is lot of conversations talk you tell this is what i feel without you know the that friction probably uh, you can talk them into agreeing to you or at least let you experiment with what you want uh, and give you that break from what they set for you and i think that should be a way to uh, go forward because i've seen lot of people become rebels and they lost touch with parents and parents are so upset with them and you are not going to be very happy if your parents are not going to be happy you know yep. they are your source yeah you know uh, every relation has a source and they are your source and we'll have to keep them uh, with respect and with love and everything has to be there you yep. can't take that away from them and uh, so with then how you can you you know manipulate your ideas into their understanding amazing i think you're a classic example of you know breaking free and like you know following your passion I hope everybody else, you know, are able to follow their passion and find their purpose in life. Yeah. 
so yeah thank you so much ma'am thanks harsha thank and i'm always so proud of you thank you thank you so yeah, much what you're doing is like amazing so thank, uh-huh. you, thank you so much you're one of our main supporters i keep saying this in forums that you know vani ma'am is like our backbone and even in our previous interview we mentioned uh, vani ma'am and uh, she's like hey, uh, thank you is not enough like you know like no, that so much we should of, not uh, thank each other we should just be happy that we have this yes we have, we, we connect yes See, so even the uh, universe is connection yeah. you know once there is that connection that's what you know propels you gives you that uh, enthusiasm and you know you see other people's work it motivates you strengthens you yeah keeps you you know on the high yeah in yeah. short you are our confidence basically <laughs> we are confident because we have people like you backing thank us thank you so much thank, thank you, you so much <laughs> <laughs> so for me there have been several moments of doubt um or doubts rather um in the past 4 uh, 4 four and a half years of uh, whatever i've been doing and um uh, uh for me um when adarsh said he's going to be doing this and then he said you know what if you come you can actually sit down with her mm. and now i am and uh, um the very little adarsh has known me he knows that i'm not somebody who gets nervous easily okay also not somebody who gets excited about meeting anyone at all okay i mean i will do the drive i will go long distance for just about anyone but um if all these moments of self doubt and everything that i've been through for several years now will lead me to people like you and to people like them i think even if i am to take a million lives i will choose the same wow <laughs> you know i don't know if i've conveyed how much um how grateful i am and seldom do i um go grammatically wrong yeah. you know my sentences are usually very proper and i'm very very confident and conscious of how i speak so uh, to the entire team of oapn thank you so much uh, for having me here for the second time and just in in a couple of episodes you're you know, letting me do this uh, and that too with her because i've followed you for several years and i've uh, and i've and i've told myself at least once in my life i want to just be in her presence because when you do um something unconventional i think um, uh, at least for me like you have had your moments of doubt and you've moved on for me uh, because in our uh, generation itself there are very few people who are doing anything now of course i have several people um so so you you want to just take the conventional path if you know a lot of times right now the question i have um there's just one question you've already said your idea of spirituality um for me like you said the purpose actually finds you it just comes to you and it has for me and i and i see that it has for you and as you spoke i saw so many similarities in the thought pattern that I share and I'm happy I know. Right. I'm not saying it because we're on camera or anything but it is something huge for me. Mm. Um the the question I have is what in your entire experience of everything that you've been through uh do you think is the final goal of life? You know is it is it liberation like the the sages say the saints say is there something called the life cycle according to you the karma and the and the gods and the religion and all of it. So I want that from you. I think they are all too complicated for me. <laughs> I I keep things very simple, very simple because the thing is uh there is a quest in people to seek knowledge, to find the purpose and I don't understand all that. You know, I try to live my life happy and uh, be kind, be nice to people, uh do the best that you can, what is most comfortable for you. I will never go out of my comfort zone. Though I have once and broke I went out of my comfort zone but made that comfortable for myself. So whatever you do wherever you reach as long as you're enjoying it uh, as long as uh, you're comfortable being there uh, and as long as it, it gives you you know everything that you want to be at that point of time and there's nothing further when the further things comes you go back you go into that realm and th- that's what where you make yourself comfortable you're enjoying that phase and you're giving your best there. I think that's how we evolve. You know, so you mean yeah. the final goal is itself in the moment? Yes. There's no, absolutely. there's no, there's no breaking free from entire. Cycles. You have no clue where you're going to land. When you land is where you're learning, you're experiencing, you're getting what you want. Maybe that's not the right thing for you. The how you had to deal with it and move away from that. You don't know what position where you're going to go. So 
I don't know. For me, it, it is very complicated to you know uh, uh, unravel things that I'm not even aware of. So, right. <laughs> so, so basically, you're saying it's just that moral compass that you have that yeah. sort of yeah. holding you, yeah. and the universe playing its part. Right. At so, so you, so part. you know, so so what we're trying to understand is, or say rather, is that the the purpose is happening through us, and that itself is the goal. Then, perhaps. Yeah. So, so you also spoke of you know the goal is for you to be comfortable, for you to be happy. For you to just give your best, nothing is holding you back. That's that's the goal. There is no other goal. What what within you, who you are, is your goal. Nothing right. outside Completely you. Completely no, outside. Nothing outside you. Right. You know, uh, it's not like I have to have this person helping me doing this, or my partner should be this make me happy. No, your goal is to make yourself happy. Just be yeah. happy regardless of yeah. anything that's happening around you. So you have to put yourself in such a position that you're happy where you are. What you're doing is giving you happiness. What you're doing is optimum. You know, your productivity is optimum. Hmm. You're doing the best that you can. And your eyes are lit up. You want to wake up in the morning. That's the best indicator of your goal. That day's goal, that phase's goal is there. That you are happy. So basically, you're sort of deconditioning yourself from everything the society has conditioned you to, to become. Yeah, and and actually realize why you are here. Yeah. So I think I think uh, she's answered it so beautifully for me. I don't think did I take four minutes? I think I took four minutes just talking and saying thank you. <laughs> yes. uh, that's the only question I had for you. And uh, thanks, Deepika. It's so lovely that you are here with me in my home. Thank you. So nice to also meet people like you who are thank so, you. Uh, you know, doing so many things and uh, uh, wanting to do more right. and you know constant quest to reach. Different goals. Yeah. yeah, like you said, I think the purpose finds us, and I think we've all actually found our uh, goals. I can see. I, I can't see clearly because I'm not wearing my spectacles that far. But I know Hasha is uh, very, very happy to get me. <laughs> so is Andesh. So I think. I think we are uh, living our goal. I think that's why we're all in yeah. the same room as each other. Thank you so much, Adar. Thank you. Thanks Thank again, you so much. Hasha. Thank you, Adar. Thank you for being in my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So it's things that come so naturally for me now to talk. I would have said ba 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 ba. Ten years back, if you asked me questions about all those, I would say, "Oh my God, I'm so uneducated. I have, I don't understand. People read books. You know, I don't read books. I can't. My my son sent me some text. He said, read. Odia, Odia. He's asking me, Illa. From now on, I will do track AI translation. Voice note, I will send for you. He knows I. I say I don't read. I'm uneducated. <laughs> One paragraph, many of them are even better. So, ma'am, just to get an insight on maybe the next one year of uh, one or two years of uh, your work, like what are things uh, you're waiting to start working on? What are things uh, you're waiting to do? Uh, projects, anything? No, like that. Nothing like that. I've never. All these years, I, it has never been okay uh, that I work towards something. Okay. Uh, whatever comes, if it's comfortable, anyway. dive into it. That's it. So we have a team, and a lot of things are happening. So right now, I would like to amplify the work we are doing, uh, because you know I don't want to take the spotlight, and you know our team is known by only me. I want everybody to be uh, uh, you know showcased, and everybody has to have their. Uh, everybody is doing awesome work. You know, I get the privilege because I have followers. So it's like you know, yeah, you told me spotlight, no? So <laughs> it comes on me. So, so I I try to go back so that you know we can have others coming forward and uh, doing things with this awesome team we have. And uh, yeah, well, I, I mean I'm I'm married to that team. So whatever we do, we are doing together. So let's see what projects come up and mm -hmm. we're taking this whole movement forward. That's all. So, ma'am, you you have so many followers. So your views also are, uh, you know, you get millions of views on some reels. So when our content doesn't work, we feel very bad, ma'am. Like something, some reel doesn't cross, say, 20K. So 20K is a small number for you, but for us, it's... Uh, no, no, no. You know, like just saying, <laughs> 20K views, 30K views. Uh, so we feel bad if it doesn't work. So if your reel doesn't uh, do that well, do you also feel bad, ma'am, or you're not looking at this I'm numbers? making a reel tomorrow, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, Martha Irveko, yeah, the also. It's like you hit a jackpot somewhere. Actually, life is like that. You can't, uh, you know, at every leave uh, reel you get, they'll say it's you have to. They give you tips on how to get this. I said, I can't even look at all those because 
it's the intention is not that if mm-hmm. if it reaches organically it's the best for me you know i don't want to push boost and all that so yeah but i think there is a lot of work and lot sure. of effort you're putting yeah. definitely the whole intention is it has to reach long i'm yeah. sure yeah. you well, you think- have my blessings that you will do very well in future and get lot of people viewing your content and you know getting motivated by it because when you interview people in you know so many different people you get their understanding of how their life was and also you bring that out that's an amazing thing you know especially for people who don't read autobiographies like me <laughs> i just watch a youtube video of yours and i'll get oh this guy is like oh that man did so much and this lady you know like this and what mm. asha and uh, guru did so amazing <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah no i think what um, what you uh, reinforced uh, to me today is the happiest people in the world are actually the simplest people 100% yeah because you are not complicated yeah, uh, you know uh, dipika's question was longer than your answer thank <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> no the reason i say that So the the reason I say that uh, you know not to put Deepika down. In fact, I was getting but... nervous that she asked me questions. <laughs> Then I said, "Bunny, it's okay. Don't open up your head." You know, I was thinking, "Oh my God, she's talking about good English and this and that. What is she going to ask me?" <laughs> I seldom get this nervous. She yes. said, "I said, oh, I felt so good." <laughs> <laughs> No, that's just the English teacher and her coming out. That's yeah. all. But I think the point that I want to make is, I think some of us uh, need to learn being more simple. I think all of us struggle uh, of overthinking and uh, overcomplicating things that are pretty simple. So thank you for reminding us that uh, we need to live a simple life. Uh, it's nice to have met you. It's nice to have met you today, and I'm I'm, I'm waiting to see where the journey takes you. And you know, all of us will be. uh inspired uh, not just now even going forward and uh, i'm sure your blessings are going to take us a long way thank I you i think that's uh, thank you that's what it's it nice is nice of you to say that uh, yeah. but yes yeah i mean you're doing meaningful work and that itself is a huge blessing for you yes ma'am. is uh, yeah you have chosen a field where it's not it's not uh, ordinary yeah yeah you're in a very uh, extraordinary uh, path <laughs> you will get extraordinary rewards so you yeah. know i think it's also special because uh, you know dipika keeps telling me others your intention is good but you know you need more real stories more more real people so this definitely adds on to that uh, thank, thank you for you. taking thank you, so <laughs> thank you for taking the time out ma'am i think all our uh, prayers uh, blessings happiness all of us want uh the best life for it's you it's so sweet of you thank we you we want you to uh, you know be happy always just as you are and uh, yeah that's pretty much it anyone else anything any questions before we before we cut thank you for you, having you uh, 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 is run your question through <laughs> you'll suddenly ask some cut that when anyway thank you ma'am thanks, thanks. Thank you uh, so much. Thank you. It was lovely, you. lovely talking thank to you. you. And yeah. Yes, this was episode number one zero four. Uh, of on a personal note with other Sakre, this is quite uh, quite a different episode. Uh, if you watch till here, do let us know. Uh, we excited about uh, the episodes that are coming up as well. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, we'll see you all on the next one. Thank you.